We're about to read the Yom Kippur Aftarah. And the goal of reading an Aftarah is not just to add extra section of the Bible to our service, some more Hebrew, some more chanting, but rather to acknowledge and to recognize the voice of people 2,000 and 3,000 years ago that were our prophets. Prophets like Isaiah, who raised their voices when they found injustice, who spoke for the most vulnerable, for the widow, the sojourner, and the orphan, who remind us that we are all created in the image of God. Rabbi Lauren Holtzblatt, in her magnificent eulogy to Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg this past week at the Supreme Court said, to be born into a world that does not see you, that does not believe in your potential, that does not give you a path for opportunity or a clear path for education, and despite this, to be able to see beyond the world you are in, to imagine that something can be different, that is the job of a prophet. And it is the rare prophet who not only imagines a new world, but also makes that new world a reality in her lifetime. This was the brilliance of justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Zichronali Rabracha. Rabbi Holtzblatt continued, and I quote her, the Torah is relentless in reminding us and instructing and commanding that we never forget those who live in the shadows, those whose freedom and opportunity are not guaranteed. 36 times we are taught that we must never forget the stranger. 12 times we are told to care for the widow and the orphan. This is one of the most important commandments of the Torah. It is the Torah's call to action. It is also the promise written in our constitution. As Justice Ginsburg said, and Rabbi Holtzfeld quoted, think back to 1787, who were the people? They certainly weren't women. They certainly weren't people held in human bondage. The genius of our constitution is that now over more than 200, sometimes turbulent years, that we have expanded and expanded. This was Justice Ginsburg's life work to insist that the constitution deliver on its promise that we, the people, will include all the people end of the quote. In the book of Isaiah, which will be soon here chanted by Sarah Smolover, the Aftarah begins with a call to rebuild the road, to remove any blocks or obstacles that are in, way, in the way so that God's people can live in freedom. The prophet raises his voice crying out loud and clear, that religious ritual without moral action does not achieve the goals of a fast day. The text is one of the most radical teachings our tradition offers regarding Yom Kippur. On a day focused on self-reflection by means of prayer and fast, we are told in no uncertain terms that we have a moral obligation to act in the world and that our fast is meaningless, meaningless, if we do not listen to this message. This is the religion Isaiah teaches. Feel, feed the hungry, clothe the naked, house the homeless, heal the wounded. Rabbi Jordan Brownick, dear friend of our community, explains and imagines Isaiah in 2020 saying the following. If we abstain from food, but don't fight fascism in our midst, then we are not doing it right. If we refrain from drinking, but ignore the glaring inequities of our society, then we are not doing it right. 
if we beat our chest in synagogue, but stay silent about systemic racism, then we are not doing it right. If we join together to break the fast with our families and don't think of the families torn apart by an unjust immigration system, then we are not doing it right. Before we hear the call of Isaiah, I'm going to invite you all to hear the call of TBZ member James Cohen, who calls and cries out loud and prays for our commitment to racial justice here at TBZ, this Yom Kippur, and this year. May our fast be meaningful. May the prophet Isaiah and the prophet Justice Ginsburg continue to inspire us. We promise to carry your legacy. Yehi Ratzon Milfanecha, may it be your will. May it be your will that this year be the year that racial justice takes root in our country, in our Jewish community, and here in our synagogue. May it be your will that this year I not fear for my black son's safety as we walk past police into Jewish communal spaces. May it be your will that this year be the year we no longer hear the question, how are you Jewish? As if my children's skin color could possibly influence their connection to Hashem. May it be your will that this year be the year that when my child tells me a young lady at the Jewish day school has a crush on him, that I can celebrate rather than fear the racism he might face when brought home to meet the parents and his deep, burnished, ebony skin doesn't match their expectations for their daughter. May it be your will that this year be the year that I no longer hear in our Jewish community any opposition to the simple statement, black lives matter, as if any argument with this statement could ever coexist with the concept of B'Tselem Elohim, that each of us is created in God's image. May it be your will that this year be the first year we don't hear from our own Bima about the blacks and the Jews, as if these are separate groups of people, as if there aren't black Jews sitting here in the pews, their own lives and humanities denigrated and made invisible from this statement. May it be your will that this year be the year that our sacred kahila rises up as one to demand racial justice. May it be your will that this be the year that our country rises up and rejects the white supremacist vitriol that has inspired so much violence currently emanating from the highest office in the land. May it be your will that this be the year that every single synagogue has a banner outside like ours, proclaiming pro proudly that we believe in the humanity of black folks. May it be your will that this be the year that not one more unarmed black American is murdered by the police. Kenya Hiratsong. <laughs> 